thank the organizers for the wonderful opportunity to be here and present this talk in this conference. Uh, well, let me just say that maybe the title that I've written here is a little bit uh, ambitious uh, for what I'm actually going to say. Maybe I should give a secondary title for this lecture, which is a cellular approach to the topology in gauge theory. That's, that's actually what I'm going to talk, uh, talk about today. And I guess this more general title could be left for, for future work, which is currently in progress, uh, with Jose Antonio Zapata from Morelia. And well, first of all, I want to say happy birthday to Adolfo. Uh, uh, and uh, let me tell you a few words about my first encounter with Adolfo, which wasn't in this conference. And it wasn't uh, at, during my arrival to CIMAT, but it was a little bit before when I was a graduate student, when I read this wonderful essay that he, that, 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 uh, that, uh, he wrote. For me, it was very, I guess, meaningful and very humbling to read it. It meant a lot when I read it. Uh, said a lot of things, and something that I learned from this article is that I follow a kind of similar path than Adolfo in my studies and in my work, because uh, as Adolfo, I also started as a physicist, well, as a physics student that later on turned into a mathematician, and uh, basically the reason why I left physics for math is because I never understood I could never understand the, the way physicists think. And well, later on, I learned that I was not the only one. So <laughs> I think uh, the, the, this cartoon explains it very well. And well, also, I want to say that since after all this is a talk, this is a conference on graded algebras, I want to say that there's a little bit of graded algebra in this picture, which is that uh, something that Alain Cohn said in, in some essay that he wrote that which is that physicists, well, mathematicians tend to behave like something that in physics is called fermions, and physicists tend to behave like some more type of particles that are called bosons. And in some sense, I would say that this talk is going to be a story about the interaction of a fermion and a boson. But let me start. So first of all, let's uh, consider an arbitrary compact Lie group G. And, uh, I'll be considering the main object, well, the first half of the main object that I'll be considering this talk is uh, what is called a principal G bundle over an arbitrary smooth manifold. What is that? Well, it's a smooth vibration uh, that moreover has a right G action defined on the top space in such a way that the fibers are G torsors and that has an additional property of, uh, of uh, being trivializable once one considers sufficiently small neighborhoods around uh, an arbitrary point on the base. And uh, well, if you haven't seen what a principal bundle is, you, you may think about this picture, which is uh, the famous hop vibration. I guess it's really incomplete because you should be also considering the base space, which in this case is the plane or the plane with a point at infinity, which is uh, the two sphere. Anyway, so principal bundles are objects like this that have a lot of geometry in them. Yep. Oh, well, basically, a space where a group, OK, it's a group. It's all something that it's almost like a group. It's just that you haven't fixed a point. As soon as you fix a point, then, then you can identify that space with a group. You see, topologically, it's just a group. It has all the properties that a group has, but you, don't, you haven't really specified a point. Uh, I, I guess another way of calling it is a principal homogeneous space. That's another way that torsors are called. And well, the second part of uh, the second main object I'll be considering this talk is a connection in P, which physicists call a gauge field, uh, which is basically, in its most possibly most elegant formulation, a gene variant splitting of the tangent bundle of the uh, principal bundle uh, in such a way that, let's say, the right-hand side, this part here, corresponds to a, to, to, to a bundle of horizontal spaces. And the, 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 the right-hand side, this part here, the kernel of the differential of the projection, is something that it's always canonically defined. It basically depends on, 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 on the structure of this vibration that I have here. Uh, well, maybe this is not the, the, the way physicists think about it, or the way physicists used to think about it. Uh, but it's actually very succinct, 
a very elegant way to think about it, and it'll be very useful for me. It'll be very useful to think of a connection in terms of, 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 of this sort of uh, algebraic or geometric structure, or a principal bundle. And well, the thing is that connections, if we consider all of them, once we fix a bundle, form an infinite dimensional affine space that is, again, well, I guess a, some sort of torsor for a vector space that means that, uh, that, that you almost have a vector space, uh, but the difference is that you have, an, you have not a preferred point in the space. As soon as you choose an arbitrary point, you can keep a structure of a vector space to, to the space of connections, but the thing is that in general, in full generality, there's usually not a choice of, of, of uh, explicit connection or a principal bundle. And something very important that arises from these constructions is what is called the gauge group. Well, formally, it's a, a group of smooth sections of this associated bundle of groups. But maybe there's a, the, the, here I guess I'm considering the, a joint action of the group on itself and the bundle of Lie groups that you can construct it that way. But there's another way to think about this gauge group, which is basically the group of the automorphisms of the bundle P that preserve the identity, that, sorry, that project to the identity. In other words, that map the fiber to itself. That's still something huge, a really big group, but very important in, uh, in gauge theory for the following reason. This group appears as a group of symmetries. Group of symmetries of what? Well, something that is called the Yang-Mills functional, but Really, in, I guess, in this case, I, I will not be considering so much because I'll concentrate in, 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 in another problem. But to define the Young Mills functional, you really, need find, you, you really need a little bit more of information than the one that I've give, given you here. You actually need to fix a metric, of, uh, a metric on the base space of your principal bundle. And once you do that, you can define this object, which is basically a way to measure the L2 energy of the curvature of an arbitrary connection. And, uh, well, if you play with this object, with this, with this functional that I've written here, you will see that it's actually invariant uh, with respect to the action of the gauge group. In other words, the, 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 the Yang-Mills functional does, does not see the, the, the symmetries given by the action of the gauge group on the space of connections. You cannot really distinguish a connection and another connection that it's gauge equivalent in the sense that corresponds to the, 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 to the same orbit under the action of the gauge group in the space of all connections in that affine space. So physically or geometrically, the objects of interest, the objects I want to consider, and let's say physicists or geometers consider, uh, correspond to the quotients of uh, the affine space of all connections uh, modeled out by, by the action of the gauge group. Uh, well, that's actually a quite complicated space and let's say a lot of all the trouble that, 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 that arises from, from, from the geometric or physical study of gauge theory, or a big part of it is actually concentrated on, oops, oops, on, the, on, on the structure that this quotient may have, which is actually quite complicated. But, but, but anyway, so the thing is that since understanding quotients, it's a little bit difficult, one looks for alternatives. And one alternative is to try to make sense of objects, quantities, functions, whatever I can define on the space of connections, that it's actually invariant under the action of the gauge group. And, uh, well, th th that's where the holonomy of a connection enters into the game, which depends on a little bit more of information. I actually have to fix a point on the base space, on, uh, on the, the base manifold M, and then I have to fix also a point in the fiber uh, of that point in the principal bundle. Once I do that, I can basically uh, do the following thing. I can consider base loops. An arbitrary loop on the base manifold that is based at the point x0. And with the connection, I can construct a lift, a horizontal lift of, of that loop in such a way that the lift is not going to be a loop necessarily, but the starting point and the end point of the lift of the loop are going to live in the same fiber. And the important thing is that well, I've said that, that, that the fibers are G-torsors. They're torsors for the structure group. So I can actually measure the difference between the starting point and the end point of the lift. And that's an element in the group that I can associate to every loop, and it's called the holonomy of that loop with respect to a specific connection. And, uh, well, as I said, the terms of the, the horizontal lift and the important property, the fundamental property that it has 
and which is why I'm concerned here is that it's gauge invariant. It's unsensitive to uh, to to, to uh, gauge transform. Uh, so it's independent of gauge transformations. And uh, well, I guess this was a motivation for a physicist uh, called Kenneth Wilson, which in 1974 introduced what now are called Wilson loops, uh, which is basically a sort of uh, group valued function on the space of connections modulo gauge transformations. And the idea is the following. One takes a loop and fixes that loop. And once you fix that loop, you consider all connections on an arbitrary principal bundle. And to each one of those connections, you associate the corresponding holonomy. As I've said, that's a gauge invariant object. So it actually descends to a function on, uh, on the quotient space. And uh, well, the, 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 the thing is that if one considers all of them for all loops, this uh, collection of objects, this collection of functions constitute a complete system of, observ of observables, what physicists call observables, for, 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 for the space, which is basically a, com a complete set of functions for, for, for understanding the, the, the geometry of this space. And uh, well, with this, physicists introduce something that is called lattice gauge theory, which is essentially a way to study, one way to study, a very successful way, although computational, uh, to study quantization of yang mill theories. The idea is that one introduces, a, let's say, if one considers the plane, for instance, one considers a grid, one considers a lattice in the plane, and then, well, to each one of the points in, in, uh, the, corresponding to the vertices of the lattice, one associates a vector that somehow corresponds to a fermionic field. And uh, to each one of the, 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 the links, to, to each one of, uh, let's say, one, the one-dimensional cells of this decomposition, of this cellular decomposition of the plane, one associates the group element. And basically, one captures the interaction between let's say fermions and, 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 and bosons, or let's say, maybe I should say spinorial fields and connections, or let's say gauge fields, uh, in, in this discretization, in this simplification of the theory. What, and, and what is the idea that, well, one is considering a family of paths, a specific family among the, the, the infinite choices that one has for all paths in, let's say, the plane or an arbitrary manifold, and what considers a subclass uh, spanned by this, by, by this grid, by this uh, lattice? And then one tries to study gauge theory, say the study of connections, modular gauge transformations, instead of discretize information concentrated in the links here. Now, uh, the important thing of this construction is that it is intrinsically local. And uh, we would like to, let's say, the motivation for me and for this talk and for this work is to consider global extensions that actually capture topological features of theories. As you see, this, the, the, this picture that I've drawn here is really the final small region in the plane. And I guess for physicists, that's fine, because they usually, they, they usually work locally. They do, do local computations. But that's not necessarily satisfactory in general, especially if we want to consider this, this object, this theories from a mathematical point of view. So uh, there's an alternative. Uh, that, that, that we'll be considering for the study of gauge theory, which comes uh, from, from considering the space of base loops in, in the base manifold M. The idea is, as before I considering the, the manifold M, which is the base for my principal bundle, and I'm going to fix a point, x0, and then I'm going to consider all the loops that are based at that point. As we know that that, that space has a multiplication, we can simply compose loops and then produce new loops this way. And... Uh, what we learn when we take an algebraic topology course is that if one considers the homotopy relation, then one obtains a fundamental group. Right? That's, that, that, that's basically the idea. But unfortunately, that's too restrictive is if what we want is to study holonomy. If we were going to study holonomy of flat connections, that would be enough. We don't, need, we don't need more than that. But well, flat connections are just a very specific type of connections. And in general, one wants to consider all of them. So one, one has to look for alternatives to this. And uh, I guess the, 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 the fundamental observation is the following, that, uh, that, that, that uh, one can define the notion of uh, a thin homotopy, some, some sort of uh, weaker equivalence relation, 
which goes as follows. One says that homotopy of loops, it's 10 if it's same as each containing some loop. So in general, when one considers homotopies, like one could, in principle, retract loops to, 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 to points, but when one considers thin homotopies, then the idea is that this, in general, is not going to be something that I can retract. But if for some reason I consider a loop that looks like this, let's say, whose image is actually containing a path, then in that case I, I actually allow a retraction to a point. It's much more restrictive, but, that, but that's actually the, 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 the kind of, of homotopy that I want to consider right now. And the, the fact is, well, that when, if one goes to the algebraic topology book and goes and looks for the proof of the fact that the, that, that, that the fundamental group is a group, that when one, define, when one defines the space of loops uh, modulo homotopy, what one gets is actually a group. One considers a collection of homotopies that give the structure of a group. And if one goes and checks those homotopies, one verifies that those homotopies are thin. So what is the conclusion that one can draw from this? That one can construct a bigger group, you see? It's not really necessary to go from the space of base loops to, to the fundamental group, but one can stay at an intermediate level, which is what I'm going to call the group of base loops, and I'm going to denote by omega 0 m, which is the quotient of, uh, of uh, the space of all loops based at a point, modulo thin homotopy. Basically, you see, I'm not, I'm not saying that this is something that I can retract to a point, but for instance, a loop that looks like this will be retracted, will be retractable to a loop without that tail there. That's, that's a relation that I'm considering. And why am I considering? Why is it important? Because the holonomy of a connection is invariant under thin homotopies. This is important the property why I'm considering this. And the, I guess the punchline is the following. If one considers a connection in the principal bundle, one can construct a holonomy homomorphism from, from, from the group of base loops to the, to, the, uh, to the structure group of the principal bundle by taking the holonomy. And there's a reconstruction theorem that probably goes back to the 50s and work of Kobayashi and many other people. But I guess it was formulated in, in, in the way that I'm doing in the 90s, in the early 90s, by, by Barrett. And, uh, Basically, it says the following, that if one starts with a holonomy homomorphism and uh, one imposes a smoothness condition on family of loops, then one can determine a principal G bundle with a smooth connection in such a way that the holonomy of this connection is equivalent to the holonomy of homomorphism I started with. That's the idea. And, well, now I'm going to talk about the work that I've been doing. Like, at this moment, this is where, where, where my work actually appears. And the proposal, because after all, what we want to do is to, 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 to consider, uh, let's say, a mathematical formulation, more rigorous formulation, or let's say, a mathematical formulation of lattice gauge theory that, that incorporates topological features, uh, I need to modify the previous tools. And, uh, well, what I want to do is to provide a mathematical refinement of lattice gauge theory, and the idea is going to be the following. I'm going to take the base manifold M, and I'm going to consider a cellular, de uh, cellular decomposition of the manifold with a property that is dual thread triangulation. You see, I've, in this picture, I've drawn a triangulation of a surface in a, in a small region, and uh, then I consider the dual cell decomposition. And more than that, I am also going to consider very centers at each one of the cells that is Let's, for instance, I'm going to consider this special point here. I'm going to consider this special point here in this one cell. I'm going to consider this vertex as a, as a very center as, uh, as well. And moreover, I'm going to consider an open cover, which I guess it's hinted in this picture, whose nerve is equivalent to the very centric subdivision of the triangulation. Basically, the idea is that to each cell, let's say to this two cell, I'm going to associate the, the, the corresponding link to the very center corresponding to it. So basically, this open set that, 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 that contains this two cell, and, and so on for each one of the rest of the cells. For instance, for this one cell, I'm going to associate this open set consisting of these two triangles and so on. OK, so in fact, what I'm calling triangle dual cell at the compositions are very natural. They, they, they appear in nature, as we can see in this picture. I mean, this is, after all, just a, a collection of bubbles in. In, in, I don't know, in some bucket or something like that. And 
The reason why they appear in nature is because they're topologically stable and they're small deformations. If you try to deform this, the, the, the cell decompositions, you will see that you're basically not going to be able to change the topology of the cell decomposition. And that's what makes them special, at least for me. And well, they're actually useful for, 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 for uh, what I want to consider in a few minutes. So what I'm going to do instead of considering the, 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 the space of base loops, I'm going to consider what I'm going to call the path groupoid with respect to the previous cellular decomposition, which is going to consist of all the paths in M whose source and target is some very center in the cellular decomposition. If I go to this cellular decomposition, basically the idea is that I'll be choosing, let's say, an arbitrary pair of very centers, and then I'm going to consider an arbitrary path that can join them. And I'm going to do that for any pair of very centers. For instance, I can choose this one and this one, and I'm going to consider all these paths. As it's clear from the picture, probably, these paths in this uh, path group point satisfy a factorization property. I can always factor these paths uh, in such a way, let's say modulo thin homotopies, in such a way that each one of the factors is contained in, in each one of the cells uh, that, that is going to contain an arbitrary path. For instance, in this case, I could factor this path as follows. I could take here a tail here, another tail here, and uh, I guess I'll need another tail here. And I could factor the path as a path lying in these four cells. Okay, so the definition is that uh, a, a cellular parallel transport map, I'm going to consider not holonomies, but parallel transports, which is something that you can do as soon as you trivialize two points. So let's say you choose, you, choose, uh, you, you choose base points on fibers of two points where a path is going to start and where a path is going to end. You can define, let's say, not, 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 not a group of homomorphism, but a group with homomorphism in the sense that paths cannot always be multiplied. Sometimes they can, sometimes they cannot. And, uh, from arbitrary paths in the path group with, and uh, well, one also implies a smoothness conditions when one considers smooth families of paths. And the, 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 there's an analogous reconstruction theorem, which is that if one starts with, with, with a cellular parallel transport map, then one can construct a bundle with a connection on it, and moreover, a set of points on the fibers of the very centers, such a way that the parallel transport associated to this to, to, to this geometric object corresponds uh, to, the, to, to the parallel transport map I started with. So again, one has a reconstruction theorem. That's good news at the starting point. So the, the, the important question that I want to consider here is, in fact, since I want to consider lattice gauge theory, since I want to discretize, since I want to consider only so families of paths and not all possible paths that can be defined on, on, on a smooth manifold, I want to consider the following topological question, what is the minimal parallel transport data that is necessary to recover a bundle? Certainly, all the data from, from a cellular parallel transport map is enough. But then, the thing is that if I go to a grid like people do in lattice gauge theory, that's not enough. And the reason is, I guess, kind, kind, kind of clear from, from the definition that I'm considering here, that if one considers here the path groupoid, and one here considers the group, and one considers here in the manifold M, something like a lattice, what, what one is doing is really prescribing a bunch of points in the path group point. You see, for each one of these links, one has a point in the path group point. And then what, what, you see, what, what the data of lattice gauge theory would be, will be a map that sends these points in the path group point to the group G somewhere. But certainly that's not enough to recover the topology of uh, let's say, of the principal bundle that it's hitting in this parallel transport map. One is to consider more things. A bunch of points in the, in the path group is not enough. And uh, the question that, that, that I'm posing right now is, basically, if one can say what is the bundle of a lattice gauge field, if uh, there's some sort of global and, and, and topological data that I can associate to a local, let's say, and more geometric object, that captures the, the, the topology of a principal bundle. So what one does then is to, to go to the algebraic topologists and ask them, well, oops, I think I'm running out of time, uh, and, and ask them, 
what can I say about the uh, principal bundles? Let's say the topology of principal bundles, and they will tell us that they can be basically recasted in the the topology of uh, the, the 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 classifying space. Basically, uh, principal bundle is a homotopy class of maps from the least manifold to the classifying space of the group. But you see, maybe that's group that's good if you're an algebraic topologist, but if you're a physicist. It's difficult to, to understand what that is. But, but somehow what one can see is that the answer is hidden in some sort of homotopy data. So there's an alternative which has to do with check cycles and cohomology. And, and the observation is that the co-cycle condition looks like an incidence in a triangulation. So I guess uh, when, one can think of that triangulation as the norm of the open cover. And in particular, bundles over the sphere, for instance, are classified by this, uh, by, by, by this homotopy groups based on this uh, uh, check construction. So I guess the important property that the cell decomposition has for, for the study of principal bundles is that the boundaries of all cells are actually spheres. And uh, the extra ingredient that one needs to introduce is a, well, a collection of base diffeomorphisms for, for, from, from an arbitrary close disk into the cells of uh, of of uh, of my cellular decomposition. So the idea is that I guess one has in the base manifold uh, the cellular decomposition, and then one is considering some sort of paths. But those paths are not really enough. One needs to consider families of paths to actually be able to introduce some topology in this space. And for that, one needs families of paths. And the families of paths will be parametrized, let's say, by, by cells, and they're going to be given by choices of diffeomorphisms. If one thinks about it, one will see that a choice of diffeomorphism is actually equivalent to giving a family of paths connecting to the given paths in, 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 let's say, the one skeleton of the cellular decomposition. And this leads to a path subgroupoid. Uh, uh, the important thing is that this path subgroupoid is, some sort of, is in some sense finite dimensional. It's not really a manifold, but, but it admits a cellular decomposition. And uh, well, the cellular path families actually give trivializations uh, in this principal bundle. So the main definition is, is basically this one. This is the proposal that we have for an extended lattice gauge field. An extended lattice gauge field is a homotopy class of cellular parallel transport map. Basically, we're going to identify different cellular parallel transport maps relative to, to the to to, to this subgroup of the path groupoid, this subgroupoid of the path groupoid, corresponding to choosing a collection of diffeomorphisms for the cells of my cellular decomposition, in such a way that if one restricts to, to the discrete groupoid of zero cells, that well basically corresponds to to, to a grid here of paths. Uh, in the, the 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 field doesn't change. You see the the, the gauge field doesn't change over those paths. Well, this is a local, local object with a factorization property and leads, uh, in particular, to a homotopy class of clutching maps, which are like cellular trans uh, like uh, transition functions for a bundle, but restricted to n minus 1 cells for the cell decomposition that have fixed values over zero cells. And well, uh, if one defines a global equivalence, one gets uh, what one can call cellular bundle data, which, which is actually equivalent to a principal bundle. You know, since I think I already have run out of time, I, I don't really have much. How much time do I actually have? Okay, let's say two minutes. So, in the end, one, one, one wants to remove the dependence on cellular decomposition, and for that, there's something, uh, so, some technique called uh, Pachner moves, discovered by Pachner in 1991, that, that can relate to given uh, triangulations. In, in, in a given in, in a given uh, in a given manifold, and well, the thing is that there is a way. I don't really have time to explain it, but there is a way to compare the homotopy information that it what, that one is associating to the cellular decomposition, in such a way that one can decide if two bundles associated by by, by two uh, extended gauge fields are actually equivalent. And the future work that it's right now in progress, well, that that, that it's what made him motivated is that, uh, well, one has this more general problem, more complicated problem of the description of equivalence classes of principal G bundles on a manifold. 
One can think of this as some sort of discrete set. And while doing this classification is actually a complex problem, it can, not much can be said in general. But our proposal with this, with this construction that I've given before is that one can actually give an inductive and combinatorial description of the space of equivalence class of, of G bundles in terms of homotopical cellular data. And concretely, one has some sort of orbit spaces in product of homotopy groups of G under uh, the action, let's say, of different cells of finite groups. And, well, this in particular, if successful, should either a homotopical or combinatorial model for characteristic classes of principal bundles. And, uh, well, more importantly, this construction should lead to a new geometric and analytic tools to the study of quantization of gauge theories via continuum limit. So this story is to be continued, and thank you very much for all your attention. No. I mean, I guess it depends on the theory one wants to consider, right? If one considers, if one considers young mills, then one would consider a Lorentzian vector, for instance. And then one could say it's related. Yeah, because for Lorentzian, you can consider something called Gauss antinomial transitions. Uh-huh. And you have to consider Gauss antinomial, but when you do it in the Lorentzian relation. Yeah. Yeah, you have to consider Lorentzian. I see. What is the name of the theory? Yeah, Gauss antinomial transitions. Okay. I was wondering about uh, if you have provided some, some example, some working example uh, based on a well-known model. So what I think, what I, what I need for a well-known model is say you always have a principal model that you, that you know a lot, that you know everything about, yeah. you know the, the connections, you know the gauge group, you know everything. And, and then do your uh, 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 construction and see if you can really you know, produce for me back the principal bundle. And yeah, I mean, and let's say that for, for, for the baby examples of dimensions two and three, yes. And yeah, the, the real thing comes in I, the I was thinking, for example, the, 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 uh, the hope yeah. operation. But then, if you land in the, in, the, in the sphere, then every loop is, is contracted. Yes. Then I'm not sure if that's too, too true to, to, for an example to, to work in this case. But anyway, probably uh, there should be a, an example that uh, can help us in our laboratory to, to, to see the how powerful is your work? Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's actually the motivation, I must say, you see, when one wants cons to con consider some local information that, that, that should be, I, I didn't mention it, but I didn't have time, but when one wants to consider some local information that in principle should be measurable in a lab that, that corresponds to the, to, the topo to the topology, local topology in a bundle that can in principle be glued together to give the, to, to give the global topology of the principal bundle. Yes, that's it. I would say that this is the motivation. This is the motivation for all this work. Exactly that. Okay, any other question?